Hey guys, Basic here with a brand new video and I know it's a little something different. We'll be discussing new images that have been released on Steam for the new DLC coming in 2020 for Doom Eternal. If you are new to the channel and you have not already, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and help us reach our goal of 4,000 subscribers. And let's see if we can hit a goal of 20 likes on today's video. Let's get right into it. With Doom Eternal being released just a few months ago, we have been told that there will be DLC for the campaign. Now, if you do pre-order Doom Eternal, you would have seen that there was a year one pass for it. This includes DLC for the campaign. These expansion packs will apparently focus on the events that led to Earth being destroyed and with Bethesda saying that there were new ways to play, but I would take this with a grain of salt due to how scarce a lot of these details actually are, as we only know so far that the expansion pack only comes with two pieces of DLC. If you are wanting to purchase the year one pass, it will set you back about £20 or $29 if I'm correct about that, or it could be £30, I'm not too sure. Which is well worth it due to how Doom Eternal has turned out to be. As of today, when editing this video, id Software updated their Steam page which contained the year one pass with new images for the upcoming DLC map. As you can see on screen, there is one like a futuristic oil rig which is huge. It even has boats, man. We can also see drones flying in the sky, potentially where the Doom guy gets onto the rig. Probably not, I'm probably just talking with my ass right now, but still, it looks really cool. Or this could be how the USC is obtaining Argent Energy. After all, it is what they seek, especially how Samuel Hayden knows so much about it. Let me know what you guys think, what this could be, or what the story is behind it. Let me know in the comment section below. Spoilers, if you have not already played the Maternal, what are you doing? Go watch it and go and play, it is such a pivotal game for the gaming industry and just how good this game actually plays. The second image has been released of one of your deck. Now I'm probably butchering this name, but please correct me if I'm wrong, I, I, I do apologise. This could be post your jack to the Doom guy actually killing the can maker. Maybe this could be the collapse of her, can, uh, of her kind this within the campaign, as she did mention how they need to survive by harvesting other planets or the souls of people. Obviously, if you haven't played the campaign already, um, then obviously when you get to your deck and get to that last part of the game, it explains how the, the cam maker uses human souls to pretty much combine it with Argent Energy. It's, it's, it's very, a lot of big words that it's... If you haven't already, please just check out the lore in this game through the end game screens. Also, I may cover some videos in the lore as well if you guys want me to do that for Doom Eternal because I absolutely love this game. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong on that. We also did leave Vega there and maybe we have to go back to retrieve our beloved Vega. Man, this guy is insane. I love Vega. Another interesting clue is Vega did have a line where he, when Doom Guy was looking to try and realign it like a portal back to Earth, Obviously because the icon of Sin escaped your deck and went onto Earth, we have to go back. So obviously they were clipped now where Vega starts saying some very strange things. Now, insert Vega to activate the portal. System acquired. Setting the course for the Earth dimension now. I can't see now. Am I the father of Greg? This could potentially die, delve deeper into what this could mean for Vega and Samuel Hayden. After all, Hayden did make Vega. We don't know where this could lead. Now, I, what I did for some reason start talking about how Vega could be Hayden's son or vice versa, which it makes no sense as there is no potential reason or reason otherwise that Vega would put human before Hayden created him. It makes no sense. So. Yeah, forget about that, but it's really interesting and I really do hope we get Vega back in one of the DLCs or if is Vega going to be changed or even if Vega is now part of the maker or the father as there was this whole bit of lore in Doom Eternal where father and the Seraphim uh, is, is very just strange and also really interesting about Vega uh, and his potential background because at the moment all we know is that he was created at a Mars facility in Doom 2016 by Samuel Hayden and was literally needed to be put in a, the coldest area on Mars to simply be cooled. 
it is insane. Also, I also do wonder if we'll ever find out what that mysterious voice was when you killed the cam maker, which screamed no when you killed her. You have destroyed all that I was meant to rule and are just to protect them. This will cover everything with the images being put up onto the Steam page. If you do want to go and check them out by yourself, I will leave a link below to the Steam page itself for the E1 Pass. And if you want to purchase it as well, which I highly recommend you do because I feel like this DLC for the game, uh, if it's anything like Doom Eternal or anything like the campaign we got for it, I feel like these will be some insane DLC passes alongside the storyline and trying to expand on some of the things that were kind of left out like the can maker and other kind also just exploring more ideas the background of samuel hayden what has he done what did the doom slayer do what did doom guy do when he was teleported back where did he go well those kind of things i would love to see what happened in other news mick gordon and ed software have parted ways due to some issues about the soundtrack to doom eternal now, this may come as a shock to some of you, you probably have seen it all over the place, if any fans of the Maternal probably have. And you probably know already that after a tweet uh, put out showing the mixing of the Maternal's OST wasn't to the same quality of 2016's, which Mick Gordon replied stating he wouldn't have done that and he didn't mix it. It turns out it was due to both parties to blame, not just Bethesda being bad at being a bad company. I'm going to summarize what has happened as a, as a lot and I will leave a link below to the Reddit post that Marty Stratton put up which is quite a long one and there's a lot to break down and if you haven't already just read it go and read it I'll link to it in the description below as well. So basically there was a lot of work to get done between Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal because they all wanted it to be bigger and just bigger in every so way so Mick Gordon was originally contracted to only complete 12 tracks for the collector's edition of Doom Eternal. Due to him not being able to mix all the tracks on time and being even being allowed extensions up to 6 weeks, more than actually what Mick Gordon asked originally which was only 4 weeks, sadly id Software and Mick Gordon have now parted ways I will no longer be working together on the DLC for this game and potentially even future projects. Personally for me I would like to see them move on to different IPs and this may probably be an unpopular opinion solely because I feel like Doom Eternal, how can you top that? It's such a good game. I feel like any game you release after that will just take away from it and I feel like you could potentially ruin something. So I feel like Quake would be a good way to take it and see what they come up with that because it's very similar and also the game Quake is amazing as well. It still is a really solid game. I mean, I wonder who will take his spot. He's left such a big like opening for a composer to come to fix the Doom soundtrack. And the community has suggested Andrew Hulshult. I probably butchered that name completely, but I do apologise if I have. I'm personally not sure who they'll go for for the next composer and if they'll be able to even fill boots that were originally filled by Mick Gordon. They set the standard so high, I feel like other people may struggle to see who comes up next. I'm not sure, but I really hope I am proved wrong with that. So that's going to conclude today's video, guys. If you are on the channel and you have not already, please hit that subscribe button and to reach our goal of 4,000 subscribers. I'll be covering more Doom content in the future eh, as this is easily one of my favourite games ever and I just love it to pieces. So what do you guys think what happened in the DLC for Doom Eternal? I really want to see some just more badass maps and just really interesting where they take the DLC for this and 
with Bethesda mentioning that there could be new ways to play these DLCs and within them, I'm really going to be like over the moon if I do it. And I cannot wait to see what they come up with. And comment below of what you do think will happen next. I'll see you guys next time.